Okay. Well, praise God. So I want to first of all say, greet the convention over in Chile. And I want to also thank the brethren over there. I want to salute the, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ over in Chile for their great stand for this entire message. I want to also thank Brother Joshua for the mighty stand that he has taken for this inspiration of the seven thunders over there. I did not been for the pandemic, we would have been over in Chile. What a wonderful time we had the last time. Praise be to God. So thank you very much for your great and bold stand to hold the convention in this hour of judgment. May God bless you and bless your ministry and also all the ministers over in Chile. I couldn't mention your names now, but thank you very much for taking such a bold stand. May God reward you mightily in this season. Amen. So I will just send forth a very short message for the season. Of course, the inspiration for the convention is a call to the resurrection. What an inspiration for the season and what a call. Amen. So praise God and wonder expectation for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost and for great blessings to be poured upon the believers, both um, on the UCOP and even those that will be attending the convention. May God bless you. So therefore, to, we shall just stand to our feet and let open to the scriptures. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. Um, we'll read down to verse 15. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 and verse 15. And also, we shall be looking at Act 1, 8. So it waits on this wise. Amen. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slit of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Amen. And Act 1, 8. Of course, let me just read the Amplified translation of what I've just read. The amplified reads on this wise, and his gift we have varied. He himself appointed and gave men to us, some to be apostles, special messengers, some prophets, inspired preachers and expounders, some evangelists, preachers of the gospel, traveling missionaries, some pastors, shepherds of the flock, and teachers. Shepherds, Ephesians 12. His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and actual knowledge, accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. So that is what we are called to become. Praise God. A com the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. The measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in him. See, so then we may no longer be children tossed like sheep to and fro between chance ghosts of teaching and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine, the pre of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers engaged in every shifting form of trickery in inventing errors to mislead. Rather, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things 
speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, and folded in love. Let us grow up in every way and in all things unto him who is the head, even Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And act one, it waits. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Praise God, hallelujah. So for, of course, for a title for this meeting, I will title my message, Call to the Resurrection. And of course, my inspiration is virtue power for service. And my subject is the voice of the archangel. So I first of all want to appreciate um, Brother Anodu for that wonderful message. I couldn't go through it. But the title was exciting, Call to the Resurrection in the Hour of Judgment. Thank you, Brother Anudu, for that wonderful message. Praise God, hallelujah. And what a way to start a convention with, understanding that we are living right in the hour of judgment. From the things we all see around the whole world, we understand that the church is living right in the hour of judgment, just as the prophet said, praise God, and right in this hour of judgment, God is calling forth a bride, the final voice to the final age, the call to the resurrection. And we understand, of course, the three calls that has gone forth. Malachi 4 call, which brought forth a mixed multitude. Then, of course, the bride called, which also brought forth a mixed multitude. Because many are called, but few are chosen. But praise be to God, you held on. You overcame, and you've now come finally to the final call the call to the resurrection. Praise God. What a time of rejoicing because many could not make it this far. Some backed up and they fell off at the first call and at the second call. But praise be to God, you made it right at the final call, the call to the resurrection. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we understand exactly what that means. Amen. This call will be done by the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4. So we understand why the voice angel of Revelation 10, 8 through 11 had to move over to Ephesians. Praise God, hallelujah, five-fold ministry. The angel himself will be the ministry. So he himself is now stepping over. What's a leap? Leaping from Revelation 10, 8 through 11 to Ephesians. Why? For the perfection of the saint. Amen. And we understand that this virtue, I just read you Act 1, 8. This virtue, this power that we are to receive as bride, virtue itself is a hidden mystery in the Holy Spirit. And we understand that. And it took an apostolic ministry to reveal this hidden mystery. It's called virtue power. It's hidden mystery in the Holy Spirit. And this hidden mystery will be revealed, praise God, by the fivefold ministry. Amen. Glory to God. So the only advantage that a fivefold minister had, has in this season is access to this great mystery hidden in the Holy Spirit's slot. Virtue power to make sons into gods, to bring us back to sonship, into godship, by forming these virtues in us. Praise God, helping us to climb the seven steps unto our adoption. Praise God, hallelujah. So there cannot be a call to the resurrection without virtue power, and that must be understood. Praise God, the call to the resurrection must go forth with virtue power. That's number one. And virtue power is a hidden mystery that will be given to the fivefold ministry. Only the fivefold ministry will possess this hidden mystery because they will have to use this hidden mystery to make sons of God, which was why the book was given to Adam in the first place. Praise God, hallelujah, amen. Power to become sons of God according to St. John chapter 1, verse 12. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Amen, hallelujah, see? So the hidden mystery is given to the fivefold ministry for the perfecting of the saints according to Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. That's the purpose of this virtue power. It is given to the fivefold ministry to bring us to perfection, to bring us to the complete stature of Jesus Christ, to bring us to the complete personality of Jesus Christ, so we can attain to the same perfection that Jesus Christ himself has. 
amen to the fullness of the stature of christ that's the purpose of virtue hallelujah and also this virtue power is to begin the growth process of the mature sons those who have come to maturity by revelation those whose understanding has been open to the word then god will now pour virtue and knowledge so the fivefold ministry can teach those who are the those the those are the ones who have come to maturity those who've had their understanding open to the word, praise God, even according to Luke 24, 45, then open the heed their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So before the early church could receive power, see, to be formed into the image of Jesus Christ, they must first of all have, they first of all have their understanding open to the scripture. And that was the 40 days ministry of Jesus Christ to open their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So there was now an open channel for the Holy Spirit, which is vetched to be poured into them and transform their word seed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to come back to the same position today. Amen. So therefore, virtue and knowledge will be poured out, flowed out from the five ministry to pour the virtues into us, form us into the image of Jesus Christ, before we can be adopted. So that's the purpose why the voice angel of Revelation 10, 8 through 11 is moving over to Ephesians 4. Praise God. First, it must train a fivefold ministry on how to bring the bread of Jesus Christ to perfection. So the angel, even Michael, will stand in them. Michael will be in these men. Fivefold ministry. So it won't be the man perfecting you. It will be Christ himself, Michael, it is this man bringing you to perfection. So it is not a man. It is Christ, the angel, even Michael, even Gabriel, even Jesus Christ, Elohim, the chief angel. Praise God, the angel of the capstone. He himself will be behind this man to pour the virtues into you, to bring you into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then we have faith to believe that that angel has moved over. So therefore, I'm urging you to, to release your faith and pull down dynamics. And also, we have to also understand that the only ones that will have their word seed transformed into the image of Jesus Christ will be those whose names are in the book. Daniel 12 says, at that time shall Michael stand. You see, and every name that shall be found written in the book shall be delivered. So this is time for deliverance, but the deliverance will be only according to the book. Praise God. So your name must be in the book for you to be delivered. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we believe that Michael, the voice of the archangel, Jesus Christ, moving over to Ephesians 4 to step into these five offices to bring the church to perfection by pouring the virtues of Jesus Christ into the church, so as to bring us into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So it begins the growth process, but it will only be to those whose names are in the book. So therefore, we are back to the call to the resurrection. Now, this call to the resurrection was simply how sons of God, we are to be born. We are to be born. We are to be born here by the voice of the archangel, which is the voice of the resurrection. So Adam was supposed to pick up the voice of the archangel, the voice of the resurrection, and begin to bring forth the names out from the book. That was how we are supposed to come here if sin had not interrupted the plan, the program of God. But Adam was coming on to something, but Adam could not get there. Adam fell and sin came in and interrupted the program of God. But God sent a prophet after thousands of years to restore us back to word and spirit so we can be born according to the spoken word, which is word and spirit. And word and spirit makes up the spoken word. And word and spirit makes up power. Word and spirit is equal to power. It is, is equal to virtue. And word and spirit, the spoken word, this is how sons of God are to be born. Praise God. Hallelujah. So therefore, before a fivefold minister, can speak sons of God back from the book. That fivefold ministry must have spoken word. It must have spoken word, which means it must be called forth by dynamics. Praise God. It can't be something intellectual. No, it has to be by dynamics. So the dynamics, first of all, 
will manifest the fivefold ministry. So when they speak, it won't be them speaking. It will be Christ himself, the voice of the archangel speaking. Because Christ himself owns the spoken word. He hears the spoken word. So he has, to, he, he has to be in this man. They're bringing forth the names that are in the book. Also somebody in this age, somebody in this season must take the book from the hand of the angel and speak for the names. Amen. By word and by spirit. So that's the season that we are in now. Praise God. And I believe that God has had men. Praise God who are mature. The bread of Jesus Christ to whom the word has been opened. They are mature. They understand who they are. They understand where they are coming from. This is now your season to be born by word and by spirit. To be born by spoken word. Praise God if your name is in the book. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So that's why so the growth process is about to begin in those mature sons. All this while we carry in as a word seed. But the season has come for the growth process for the life that's in the seed to begin to manifest itself by the life that's in the spirit so the life in the spirit will connect with the life that's in the seed praise god why to bring forth the life that's in the seed because the life that's in the seed is your original life praise which is the life of god the divine life of elohim that life was placed in you by a word seed so God is coming back with his own life. The life of Elohim, the life of those seven spirits, is coming back to bring forth the life that's in the seed. Then what do you become? You become the life that is in the seed. Oh, praise God. Every seed bringing forth after its kind. And the life that is in you is the life of Elohim. Is the life of God. That's the life that was placed inside your seed. That's why your seed is Joseph perfection seed. Praise God. And if Joseph perfection brings forth after his kind, it can only bring forth an other son of God. And the son of God will be Elohim. It will be Christ made manifest for this age and for this season. That is your promise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen and amen and amen. So therefore the growth process will now begin. So virtue will pour the seven virtues in you. And then number two, virtue will begin the growth process. That means you shall begin to add to your faith, virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness, brotherly kindness, all the way to charity. That is what virtue is coming to do for the season. But it's a hidden mystery. Oh, praise God. Because it takes growth to come to the full stature of Christ. Amen. So therefore, this fivefold ministry, number one, what will they do? Bram says, pour out virtue and knowledge that I might be able to teach those. See? So God must pour out virtue and knowledge. For what purpose? For the purpose of teaching those who have come to maturity in understanding. See? Now, this teaching is not about expounding on the scriptures. But this teaching is about placing placing the man positionally what he is. Brahm says teaching places the man positionally for what he is. And we can never rightly be able to have faith until positionally we know what we are. Praise God. Hallelujah. See? And on the third phase, you find your place in Christ. So it means this fivefold ministry will have virtue and will have knowledge. Praise God to teach those. But in their teaching, they will be placing you positionally for what you are. Because you cannot rightly be able to have faith until positionally you know who you are. And your position comes on the third step, on the third phase, when you find your place in Christ. Oh, praise God. So it all ties in. So Brother Barnum says, build me up, O Lord, into this. Let Christ be my head that's walking through me. On my foundation, my faith that's in him. Let virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, and bodily kindness walk in me, O God, is my prayer. I don't care, live or die, sink or drown, denomination, no denomination, friend or no friend. Let that walk in me. Let Christ's virtue, his knowledge flow out that I might be able to teach those. 
For God has set in the church apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists, all for the perfecting and bringing all these virtues into it for that perfection of the coming of the Son of God. Praise what a season we are in. So the five ministries, responsibility is to pour these virtues of Jesus Christ into the bride, but they, they can only do it by this hidden mystery of virtue power. So they must have this hidden mystery in them. So therefore, the five ministries shall be manifested sons that we are to step into the void or gap left off by the apostle. And they must be able to find this hidden mystery in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The instruments by which they can pour these virtues into the bride. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And we understand that virtue shall be the first phase of charity. Charity disguising itself as virtue power to form the image in you, to pour the virtues in you before the capstone comes and seals you and place you as a son. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So therefore, the only way to pour these virtues into you is by virtue power. So no minister for this age can pour the virtues into the bride except that minister has virtue power and has knowledge. The power, virtue, the body virtues in you. And of course, knowledge, God's own intelligence as how to do it. Praise God. Amen. So the voice angel is moved over to Ephesians 4 to pour these virtues into you and build you into the stature of Jesus Christ. So that's why the bride has been waiting all these years. See, Bram says here, she, the body is waiting for, which is the word, waiting for the life, which is the spirit. To confirm or make it alive. That's what she is waiting for. So we were supposed to wait on the P304 for the seven thunders to utter their voices. You see, because we can't live another life. We can only live one life, and that's our life. Bram says no other life will walk in her. She can't come to life any other way. You see, yet she feels it out there, and she knows it's going to happen. Then here it happens. Then she wakes up. She said, let there be, and she came forth, like the first one come forth. So therefore, the bride has only one life, and that life is the life of dynamics, the life of the Holy Spirit, seven spirits of Elohim. That's the only way she can come to life. She cannot come to life any other way, and she cannot live any other life. That's the life she was ordained to live, the life of, 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 of our mate, the life of Jesus Christ which is the Holy Spirit, God himself. Praise God. That life comes and quickens the seed and brings the seed to life. And I'm saying quicken means bring to life. The genuine Holy Spirit only brings to life the word that it is. It won't bring a creed to life. It can't because it's nothing of the creed. It is the life of the word of God for it is God and it quickens that body. So the purpose of the life of the dynamics is to quicken the life that's in the world. You see, so that's why it's so important that the ministry has to, has to know what to sow. We must know what seed to sow. We just can't sow any seed because the Holy Spirit only comes to quicken the word that it is. Praise God. So the word that is in you right now is the mechanics of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes, it is only coming to quicken the word that it is. So the word, is the life, the dynamics cannot quicken any word that it is not. It can only quicken the word that it is. It can only quicken just a perfection. So if perfection word is not being sown in you, then when charity falls, there is nothing in you to be quickened, nothing in you to bring to life, because dynamics only come to quicken the world that it is. So the five, the ministry must know what seed to sow. So we did not sow Methodist seeds. We cannot sow Pentecostal seeds. We can only sow the seeds of Joseph perfection, the seed of God in you that bring forth perfection. And when the life Abraham says, God threw a seed, see? So God threw a seed of his word. And there's only one thing that can quicken the word. And that is the spirit. For it is the life given to the word. And when the life in the word meets the life of the spirit, it produces whatever the seed is. So there's a life in the word. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. So the word itself has life. And the spirit itself has life. So when the life of the spirit, Bible say, meets the life of the word, 
it produces whatever the seed is. And that's how every seed being formed after its kind. That means the seed of God in you transforms itself into the life of the spirit. Because the life of the spirit comes to quicken the word that it is. So when the life comes and quickens the word in you, then the word in you produces the life of the spirit. You can't separate it. That's how God and his word becomes one. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. So you know exactly what this power is supposed to do. This virtue power, it is supposed to transform you into the word image. It's supposed to transform you into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And that's exactly how we are going to be born. So we are coming back as original sons of God for this day. Coming back as sons of Elohim. Praise God, amen. So therefore, no minister for this age can call forth the names from the book except that minister holds the book. Because the book was given to Adam to call forth names. So if Adam had not fallen, if sin had not come into this world, we are all supposed to come here by the book. Praise God. Then we wouldn't have had serpent seeds all around. Sons of God, we are supposed to come on the earth and obtain the kingdom because God gave us dominion. But because sin came and interrupted the program, all kinds of seeds are here. But one particular seed was supposed to be here, the seed of God. So seeds of God, we are supposed to take over the whole earth. There was no place for any other seed outside the seed of God which is the seed of Joseph perfection. But sin interrupted the program, and we have all kinds of seeds on the face of the earth today. And thank God that God sent a prophet to bring us back to that original seed, the seed of the world, which is Joseph perfection seed, the only seed on the earth that has the capacity to reproduce God again on the earth. And thank God we found that seed, Joseph perfection seed. Amen. That seed itself will manifest Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So you understand exactly what virtue power is to do. You see? So therefore you can't be deceived. You can't be fooled by any man. You understand exactly that for this season, for us to have the voice of the resurrection, we must have virtue power. That's the hidden mystery. That's how to become the image of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. So charity has to come. Charity disguises as virtue. Praise God. Then virtue will now pour the seven virtue of Jesus Christ into you. And we shall become the manifestation of the sons of God for this day. And that is what nature is waiting for. That we shall be born according to promise. That's the distinction. And not many people in the message shall be born according to promise. We must be born again, but according to promise. See, because that's how we become seed. Because the seeds of God for every age are the seed of the promise. Born again by word and spirit means you are going to be born again, but according to the promise. Not just a bath, but born again according to the promise. Because Babam says now we have lived through the Luther age. The Wesley's age, Methodist age, all down through the ages, and the Pentecostal age, and each age is given a promise of the word. See, and the people of that age that manifest that promised word is the seed of that age according to what Jesus said right here. They are the children of the kingdom. That's right. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit operating through his children is those seed of the kingdom at that age. So it is clear that it is only those that manifest the promised word, see, for that age, become the seed of that age. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's how we are supposed to be born. Born according to the promise, like Isaac was born according to the promise. So he became the seed of the promise. Not as Esau was born, but as Isaac was born. And the promise made the difference. The promise was the token of difference between Isaac and Esau. Isaac was born according to the promise and in the time of life. So even so, the bride for today must be born according to the promise. And that is what it means to be born by word and by spirit. Born again by word and by spirit means you are going to be born back the original way that you should have been born. Just like Jesus Christ was born. He was born according to the promise that was spoken in Isaiah 9, 6. 
he wasn't born out of the book he was born according to the book because it came in the volume of the book so he was born the word way praise god hallelujah now sin came and interrupted the plan so we had to be born outside that way we came by sex we bypassed the theophany we bypassed seven spirits we bypass being born according to the promise. So we came here just as flesh man. But God gave a promise in our word seed. Praise God. That we shall be born again by word and by spirit. Which means we shall be born again according to a promise. Like Jesus Christ was born according to the promise of Isaiah 9, 6. That a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. So Jesus Christ was born according to the promise for his day so the bride for this age also shall be born according to the promises that malachi for has revealed to us and that will make the token of difference between you and just the message people here amen call to the resurrection so that is what it means so we are going to be called by the resurrection for a bath and for adoption Praise God. Sons of God are going to step out of the book and become manifested sons. Not just revelation sons, but manifested sons. So we can enter into our dominion. We can come back to be, to be fruitful and have dominion. Praise God. Amen. Then something else worth noting. We understand that God gave the book of Elohim to Adam. He was supposed to call names out of that book by the voice of the resurrection. So we were all supposed to be children of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Right from the beginning. See, God didn't change anything. We are all supposed to be born by the voice of the archangel, which is a voice of the resurrection, which is, how, which is, which is, which is the spoken word. And that was God's own original voice. Praise God. Hallelujah. Born according to a promise. You see, and to be born that we meant, we all had to be born by the book. We all had to come in the volume of the book. Like Jesus Christ came in the volume of the book. Because he was born from the book. He wasn't born off from the book. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, so we're going back to original sons. As had us how they were born. So therefore, Adam had the book. The book of Elohim. And in that book was our names. So if Adam had come to dominion. If Adam had come to be fruitful and multiply. He was supposed to bring us forth by spoken word and not by sex. But Adam could not come to his place of adoption. Amen. So the only way to the a faithful minister can call the names is by taking the book from the hand of the angel. So go to the angel, take the book, and then prophesy. For this third phase, even according to Ephesians. Amen and amen. Now the book of Elohim was to do three things number one the book of elohim was to make was to make fruitfulness possible because god told adam number one be fruitful genesis 1 26 27 28 number one be fruitful number two and multiply then and have dominion so three things were to be accomplished by the book number one be fruitful. That means be a fruit. Number two, multiply. Multiply means increase. Populate the earth by the seed of multiplication. And number three, dominion. So those are the three things that the book was to make possible for Adam. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we understand what it means to be fruitful. Because Jesus Christ came back as the second Adam. And brought forth fruitfulness. According to St. John chapter 15. First, you must be a fruit. The number two, you must bring forth more fruit. The number three, you must bring forth much fruit. So you see the stage or the stages of fruit bearing. And each of those stages is a revelation of seed multiplication. So first, you bring forth fruit. But then you multiply by bringing forth more fruit. Then you also multiply by bringing forth much fruit. So it's not just bringing forth fruit, but bringing forth more fruit and then much fruit. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see? So these are the three levels of fruit bearing. 
and each level speaks of increase it speaks of multiplication so be fruitful and multiply brings you back to the three level or the three stages of fruit bearing hallelujah see so first be fruitful then multiply so your fruitfulness and multiplication is in saint john chapter 15. number one first you receive the holy ghost baptism god's holy fire comes upon you then you cannot be a fruit because you are not in in a place to be a fruit without these virtues coming in you and the prophet just said that hallelujah because you must have these virtues in you for you to be able to be a fruit you can't be a fruit without these virtues being in you hallelujah so to be able to be a fruit you must have these virtues in you praise god hallelujah he says don't forget now always remember this that these are the things that build the servants of christ see faith force then virtue and now remember the holy spirit cannot cap the building of god until these things are operating by the spirit no matter what you do those are the things that builds the body of christ the virtues see those things now you don't forget that that this here is forced is your faith virtue knowledge and so forth is to be added to it until the complete stature of christ is made manifest then the holy spirit comes upon it and seals it as one unit these things must be therefore jesus said by their fruit they are known see fruit you could not be a fruit without these things to bear it in you so you know, it's what the prophet said you can't even come to fruitfulness you can't even be a fruit except these virtues are in you so how do you become fruitful except these virtues are in you then by your fruit you shall be known and then when all of this takes the place of worldliness and ungodliness and so forth then all unbelief is cast out then all the things of the world is passed away then there is nothing but a new creature in christ then we come back to ephesians 4 30 grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed unto the day of your redemption so we understand how we can be a fruit that we cannot be a fruit without these virtues in us and this fruit must these virtues must be operated by the spirit so first you must receive the holy ghost baptism then your branch is now connected to the to the vine praise god then your branch is now receiving life from the vine saint john chapter 15 praise god and if the, the, the branch is connected to the vine then the branch can only live by the life of the vine then the branch cannot be a fruit because the branch can't be a fruit on its own jesus says without me you can do nothing so the branch can't be a fruit on its own except it's it is born out from the vine and the branch can't be grafted into the vine but the branch must be born from the vine praise god hallelujah then now the vine can bring forth fruit that are consistent with the life of the vine praise god so if the life of the vine is orange then the fruits will be oranges if the life of the vine is mangoes then the then, then the branch can only bring forth orange fruits so the fruits from the branch must be consistent with the life that's in the vine hallelujah praise god is it so 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 the branch can't be grafted into the vine the branch must be born from the vine and that's the only way it can bring forth fruit that are consistent with the life that's in the vine hallelujah so first you must receive the holy ghost baptism which i'm trusting god that many of you shall receive in this convention then number two you must go through a place of trying you must be purged your branch must be purged we can bring forth more fruit praise god hallelujah then for the purging you can bring forth much fruit that is god's plan for your multiplication god's plan for your increase not just bearing fruit but your fruit will increase your fruit will remain your fruit will grow from fruit to more fruit to much fruit be fruitful and multiply and that is what we are coming to abundant life life without end hallelujah life that has no beginning has no end life that is full of godliness 
life that is full of abundance we are called to abundant life because of the power that god gives the seed of god in you to multiply and to increase then when that is done next stage the book does is dominion so number one by the book you become fruitful number two by the book you become you multiply number three by the book you have dominion that's the final stage and dominion means having a kingdom becoming a god on the earth what promises we have so we are back to the book of elohim again we are back to the book of seven seals again we've come to the third pool to the third phase our third phase is now being connected to malachi for third pool so we are back to the book we are back to eden again so once somebody in this message takes the book then we begin to call names out from the book so michael jesus christ is here what is he here for to call the names out of the book praise god so we can be fruitful so adam's fruitfulness was to bring forth the names from the book and that was adam's perfection and the five minutes they come to perfection today when they can reproduce christ bringing forth the names from the book hallelujah praise god and the names from the book is your life the names from the book is your seven spirit the names from the book is your holy spirit see they wouldn't give you a human spirit they will give you the holy spirit because why that's the only life that will walk in you the life of god the life of elohim the life of jesus christ is the only life that must walk in the bride no other life will walk in her. it must be the life of those seven spirit that must walk in you hallelujah praise god amen so we are right in season. So the five ministry, we call the names out from the book. Then that's how we come to fruitfulness. Praise God. Then we bear fruit. We bear more fruit. We bear much fruit. Then we cannot have dominion over the earth, over the fowls of the air, the birds of the air, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. What a revelation. Praise God. Hallelujah. So church in Chile, I want to encourage you that we've come to the end of the race. We've come down finally to the final call to the final age. Praise God and thank God that we made it. See, you didn't pull back. You overcame in the first call, second call, because you understood the second call was the bride's call. That was the call made by the apostle. And that call was to identify your name in the book by the revelation of seven thunders. But the Bonham gave you the seven thunders, but you know the seven thunders was rejected in the message. So the seven thunders was the rejected part in the message. That was the stone that the builders in the message rejected. See, praise God, but God sent forth an apostle to identify the seven thunders in Brother Bonham's message. And the seven thunders was your name. Because the seven thunders is to gather the bride together for rapture in faith. So the seven thunders is exclusively for the bride, nobody else. But God sent an apostle to identify the seven thunder message in the message. So the seventh thunder was the message in the message. That was the right rock message. That was the message that no son has ever shone on. And that message was your name. Because your name is the words in the book. And the words in the book is the believer. And the words in the book is him. See, but God sent the apostle. It was Christ himself coming to identify your message in the message. And the message in the message is your name. And when you saw the message in the message, you responded by saying, Amen, you came out. That was the bread call. So we, you, 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 you we are called or you are called not by a man, but you are called by an echo revelation of the seven thunders, which is the message in the message that is hidden from the eyes of the prudent, from the eyes of the scholars in the message, from the eyes of the intellectual shepherds in the message, it was revealed to you. And thank God you saw your name. That's why you held on all these years. Many pulled back. Praise God. Because they didn't see their name in the book. But you saw your name in the book. So you held on. Many we are called by the first call. But few we are chosen. Many we are called by the bride call. But few we are chosen. And now we have come down to the final call. The call to the resurrection. Where two shall be on the bed. One shall be taken. One shall be left. Two shall be grinding meal in the field. One shall be taken. And one shall be left. Praise God. Hallelujah. So finally, we've come to the final call. 
we have come to the final stage we are back to the book of elohim we are back to the book of seven spirit now you are now you are ready to be formed into the word image of jesus christ oh praise god hallelujah what a revelation what an exciting moment an exciting season just to know that by the grace of god i'm going to be i'm going to come forth hallelujah seven spirit from elohim your seven spirit that you bypassed praise god but you came here by the word seed oh hallelujah praise god it's so exciting it's so refreshing just to know hallelujah you bypass your theophany you bypass your seven spirits of elohim you bypass coming here by the book but god's grace put a word seed in your soul hallelujah praise god and that word seed prepared you that word seed placed you in position to receive the word a message for your age and that's why no minister could receive you because the word seed in you is the believer oh praise god and the word seed in you was able to recognize the word for the age the word for the season so when the word seed in you had the seven thunders the word seed in you said amen so it was not you trying to believe the message it was the word seed in you believing the message so the word seed in you is the believer so god had all this planned out before the world began so how can you be lost how can you be deceived it's impossible god is much much more smarter than the enemy he's much much more smarter than the devil praise god you can't be deceived you are almost deceived but you can't deceive for the elect's sake because that seed of god in you can't let you be deceived oh praise god hallelujah to the word seed in you has been the word believer believe nothing but the word that's what seed in you provided you with Mary's belief. Be it unto me according to thy word. Speak the word only. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not going by your reasoning, but faith in the word only. That was made possible because the grace of God placed the word seed in your soul. And that's why you worship. That's why you rejoice when you catch a revelation that God prepared you for this message. And there is just no way for you to be lost. There is just no way for you to miss it. Because God in his infinite mind, praise God, knew that all these false teachers will come. All these false interpretations will come. And God prepared you, praise God. God separated you by placing a word seed in the socket of your soul. So you can recognize your message and his day. How can you be deceived? Praise God. Hallelujah. God in you in the form of a word seed. You are the seed of the word. You can't be deceived. You bypass your theophany so you can be tried for a season by the word. See, so it's so important to understand this. Why God held back seven spirits all this while was to try you by the word. See, because if God had sent down the dynamics, which is we feel the Holy Ghost, then many would have come in, but their names are not in the book. So God held back the seven spirit, but gave it the word. Because the word seed in you is what recognizes the word. Not a man, not emotions, just the word. See, so the word seed in you held on on to this day. Now you've come to the final call to the resurrection. When that word seed in you will now begin to take on life. Hallelujah, and that's the start of the resurrection. Resurrection means growth. The word seed in you will not begin to take on life and begin to add by manifestation. God now calling you aside by manifestation. So the life of God in the seed will begin to manifest itself by the transforming power of those seven spirits. That's the purpose of virtue. And God will send down this power so the hidden life that was hidden in that seed in you can begin to come out. Praise God. Hallelujah. And burst your human spirit. Because when that life in the seed begins to manifest itself, it will burst and disintegrate your human spirit. And what is left in you will be nothing but God himself. Because the watering spirit, hallelujah, of the voice of the archangel will come right on your, on your word seed and transform that seed into a bright tree. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. A bright tree is coming back from that seed. One more time, they will see Christ on the earth. They will see Christ on two feet. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. I'm so excited. The time has come. Amen. 
Oh, glory to God. Let me just close out for a few more minutes so you understand what you are. So all these years, we've been tried by the word. See, and you can't impersonate that. You've been tried by the word and the word only. And praise God, you took the word even when you did not feel it. Even when you did not understand. But you just took the word because the word said so. That was Mary's belief. Be it unto me. But according to thy word, she did not have to feel anything. She did not have to depend on her emotions. She just trusted the word. Be it unto me according to thy word. That was faith in the promised word of God. How shall these things be? The Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. Seven speak it from Elohim, from your theophany, will overshadow you. And you shall become just like Jesus Christ. The life that's in your seed shall become just like the life that's in the spirit. Because the life that's in the seed is nothing less than the life that's in the spirit. So when the life in the spirit meets the life that's in the world, it produces the life that's in the seed. And the life that's in the seed is the life that's in the spirit. The life in the seed is one with the life of the spirit. What a revelation, praise God. Because the Holy Ghost can only bring forth the world that it is. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Let me just round up. Praise God to save time. So we've come to the end of another day. The bright age is now get, is unfolding. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is time to rejoice and be happy. This is time to praise and keep your praise shoes on because the time has come. Hallelujah. Praise God. And once your name was in the book, it's now time for you to come forth. Pick up your seven spirit and manifest your book of life. The seven spirits and manifest the book of life and manifest the, the, the book of Elohim. You're coming back by the volume of the book. What a revelation, what a time, what a season. Manifest of sons of God. And nature, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God coming back. So I love you, Chile. This is just a short message to prompt you up in the meetings, letting you know your time has come to be born by word and spirit call to the resurrection so expectations are high and this call comes in when time shall be no more that's the final thing I'm, i will close down with like brother caleb said see this call comes in at the time of judgment and we are living right in the time of judgment gross darkness upon the face of the earth no light and the only light now left is the light of the sons of god the light of your glory and Isaiah says, at that time, when gross darkness covers the earth in the time of judgment, your light and your glory shall be risen, and your light and your glory shall be seen upon you. What a season we are living in. So the only voice now left, which is a true voice of God, is the voice of the resurrection. And the voice of the resurrection is the only voice left. There is no more voice of grace left except this voice. This voice of the archangel, this voice of the resurrection, that's the only true voice left. And this voice will be only in the bride. Oh, praise God, hallelujah. The voice of the resurrection. And the resurrection is Christ himself. So the voice to be formed into this image is the only voice left. And this voice is only in the bride because the spirits and the bride will say, come. So this voice will be in the bride. So the bride and the spirit will have the same voice because they will be saying the same thing. And that's the voice of God now left. Every other voice is gone. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the only voice of mercy, the only voice of grace that's left for this generation is the voice of the resurrection, is the voice of the archangel. And this voice is what the dead are waiting for. Those who died in Christ, the bread of Jesus Christ in the other ages, they are all waiting for this voice because they without us, they without this voice are not made perfect. So somebody in this message must climb seven steps by revelation and by manifestation and pick up that voice. Hallelujah, praise God. And call the rest of the brethren. Hallelujah, and form them into the image of Jesus Christ. Then bring forth the dead saints from the grave. What a task, what a commission that's been upon us for this day. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. So the faithful ministry must be able to climb those seven steps forced by revelation. Come up hither. I will show thee. Revelation 4, 5. Then that same minister must climb those seven steps by manifestation. God calling him aside by manifestation. So the first call is by revelation. The second call is by manifestation. Then he picks up the voice of the resurrection, the voice of the archangel, and call the names forth from the book and bring them forth into the image of Jesus Christ. Then bring forth the dead from the grave. What a call, what a commission. And the Branham said, that is a commission. It's a task. It's a mandate. We must fulfill it. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. So this is not playing church. This is not playing with the words or playing with the souls of men. This is real. Lives are at stake. Praise God, the judgment is here. The judgment angel is passing across the earth, looking for those that have the token, who sigh and cry for the life. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have all seen the judgment. How can we go through this judgment without the token? And the token is the voice of the archangel. It's the voice of the resurrection. It's the word image. Praise God. When the squeeze is turned loose. Hallelujah. When hell is turned loose to try to stop you from going through the resurrection and the rapture, they will see only one token. How those demons, those vicious demons, we recognize only one thing, and that's the token. And the token for this season is the word image. The token for this season is seven virtues anointed by charity. The token for this season is seven virtues anointed by charity. That's the token. The fullness of the Holy Ghost for this day. When the demons see that, then the plague shall not come nigh you. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. What a time. And the enemy is loose. Like Brother Caleb said, we are right in the hour of judgment. We are right in the time of judgment. So we need to apply the token because we are on our way to the resurrection. Hallelujah. So we must become the resurrection because Jesus Christ himself says, I am the resurrection and the life. So a call to the resurrection is a call to be formed into the image of the resurrection, which is Jesus Christ. Praise God. Then you become the token display. You become the token made manifest. Then how can those demons stop you? No matter how vicious they are, they cannot stop you. They can't even come now. You're dwelling, praise God. And that's the state we must be in, in order to be in the rapture. We must be first in this rapturing condition. We must be in this perfect condition. We must come back to a perfect state in order to make it up into the resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So it's a commission souls of men is on the stake so we can't play with the words we can't play church the hour is right upon us judgment is across the wall judgment is across the whole nation praise god hallelujah and in this hour one thing is what speaks for you the token and you can't apply the token if you don't have the token and the token for this day is a manifestation of seven spirit. God himself in the man. God himself walking down on two feet. That's the token for this day. We must be in that state to make it to the resurrection. God bless you. Hope to see you again. May God grant you grace. May God bless you. Those looking for the Holy Ghost, may they be filled. Those looking for healing deliverance, may God set them free. May the power of God be upon those meetings. God bless you. Hope to see you again someday before the resurrection. Amen.